In fact, Segment, tonight, a reaction to my interview with the president. Joining us from Washington, Charles Krauthammer. So, what caught your eye tonight, Charles? Well, the best, the best news was the news out of Moscow that you are now on their hit list and they demand an apology that I understand. You're working on in Russian, that's what I've been told. Um, look, the obvious headline is the one that everybody caught, which was his reaction to your saying that Putin is a killer. And I want to ask you, how did you feel when he gave that answer? Okay, I mean, uh, number one, no. reaction. I, I'm a little nervous here. I'm on the hit list. Did you get confirmation that, that an assassin will be following me home tonight? So, you know, I just want to no. be prepared. And but as, <laughs> as you know, the man is a killer. And there's a guy right now who is a campaigner for free elections in Russia who is in a coma, organ failure, reportedly, I think this is sort of understood to be true, poisoned by the KGB. And they killed this guy called Nemtsov, leader of the opposition, yeah. in the shadow of the Kremlin two years ago. So you agree with me. He not only is a killer, yeah. he's a and, shameless killer. And see, I just don't killer. say things like that off, you know, I, I know the research, we've researched it. And even if you want to uh, take it further, the Malaysian jetliner shot out of the sky by uh, pro-Russian thugs, the Ukraine atrocities, it goes on and on. But I'm glad you agree with me on that. However, you asked me a question. Here's how I, yes. I uh, processed uh, the president's answer. Not that it was a moral equivalency between the United States and Russia about actions, but that we don't have a right to form a judgment. And it's the same philosophy that Franklin Roosevelt used when he dealt with Stalin, is that what, what Trump wants to do is enlist Putin's help to defeat ISIS and to get away from Iran, to weaken Iran. So he says, we don't have a right to make these personal judgments that you and I just made about Putin, which are accurate. OK, because in the past, the United States has done bad things, too. That's how I processed it. But you just gave me two different answers. One was a moral answer. We don't have the right, presumably because of our own sins, to criticize him. No, not the other one. A pragmatic on one. A pragmatic <clears throat> one was FDR. I need style. Yeah, but that's his motivation. That's why he that's why he doesn't say what you so and I you just said, that Putin's a killer, because he wants Putin's help so, to beat ISIS and Iran. So when he, ta when he reacts by saying that we are killers too, that doesn't strike you as moral equivalence or and as he, I'm not going to say it didn't. I, I, my job was to elicit answers from him, not debate him in that. It was a hard news interview. And perhaps he, he did make that equivalency. I took it the other way. It was a matter of he doesn't want personal judgments. But I'll tell you what the other but headline you was. The other, you, you thought the other networks were distorting him no. by saying it was a moral I didn't say they uh, were distorting it. I'm saying they were looking for a hammer to use on his head and say they distorted but, it. But, I mean, that, that's a hammer that any sentient being would seize immediately when you say that this guy is a killer. But they weren't looking killer. at the interview He's for information. Thug. They were looking for something to get him with. And that's a fact. How do you? That's a but fact. But look, I wasn't looking for something to get him with. Well, I'm not saying Half you. I said the other hate you think Trump Mitch, networks. The point is that Mitch McConnell, a lot of other people who are not looking to get the president, reacting right. in the same way. Be it was that, a universal be reaction. Be that as it may, you can react that's any way that, you want. It's my job to get, him, to get him on the record, and I did. The bigger story, and I'm going to hold Charles over for another minute. I need 90 seconds here. The bigger story, in my opinion, is the coming showdown between California and the federal government. There's no question in my mind that California is going to lose billions, with a B, of dollars if it continues on the sanctuary city path. And he said it very clearly, and I don't think he's backing away. That's an enormous story for the biggest state in the union, is it not? It's a big story, but it's been triggered by the governor. Look, the president has made it very clear from the campaign on that if you're a sanctuary anything, we're going to cut you off. There's a lot of support in the country because this is the language of states' rights. This is the language yeah. that we heard in segregation of South, the language it was called interposition and nullification, which was essentially a repudiation of the federal authority. And I, I think this is something...
that he has great support for. If the governor of that state wants to expand the jurisdiction and have the fight, that's the story. It they is. want to risk it. That's but I don't be understand what the clash story. means. Do you expect there's going to be an armed clash? We're going to send drones? What, to California? We're just, yeah. we're just going to cut their money off, and they need it. Desperately right. need it. It's an entitlement state. Right. The state is an entitlement right. state. Those, that federal money drives up. Whoa, you're going to see, you think you got riots in Oakland now? Where do you see what happens? Charles Crowdhammer, everybody.